All right, so um, today I'm going to try to go over some advanced Miro skills. Um, there's a couple of little things. After you get a school account, there's going to be another video that says, hey, this is how you make your school account. Or if you don't want to wait, you can always just you know shoot me an email and I'll take care of that for you. All right, first thing is over here in the very far left toolbar. These are teams that you're a member of. All right, so if you have other co-teachers, that also get Miro accounts. They can make you team members for certain boards or for certain set settings. Um, and you guys can collaborate on those things and share those major boards. That's actually really kind of cool. Like for instance, this right here, LEHS Algebra 2, that was my free account that I started. I think there's only like three boards on this one. All right. This is my link to my free account. So that even if I'm on my paid account, which is what I'm on right now, that's me. My other one is my personal Gmail account. He's the owner of this one. Um, that This was way back when was my playing with features where I didn't want to get involved with my actual school work. Um, this is where I would typically go grab a board and try something out if I didn't want to mess up any lessons or create a new board. It actually became kind of useless because I can make as many boards as I want, but it's there. Uh, this right here is Mr. Caldwell's stuff. When he first started getting into Miro boards, he shared stuff with me to see so that I could check out what he was doing and see if there's something I could help him with. Or, I mean, I think that's what his motivation was. My motivation was to look and see if he was doing something better than me that I could, you know, steal from him and make, you know, pick up a skill. Not like steal his stuff, but like there was a skill I saw him using. Um, he's the one that made my projects a lot better. This is my stuff for my school. Now... Real quick, Miro uses the word projects because remember that Miro is made for a company for the business world. It's not made the educational world. They see us as their charity cases. And I'm okay with being a charity case. If you don't like that, well, too bad. So they don't have so much fol as folders as they have projects because in the business world, they have certain projects. So I use projects like folders. You'll see these are my folders. Um, they're typically listed alphabetically. Keep that in mind. You'll notice I have some down here that are start with a Z. I can change project names anytime. This was last spring when I first started getting organized. I just went in there and changed the folder to something that started with a Z at the end. That puts it down at the bottom so that it's there if I want it. I mean, I can typically throw stuff away, but I'm a bit of a pack rat, right? Um, I had a folder called Use Province Staff Boards and Use Algebra 2 Boards. Those are boards that weren't necessarily for a class, but they were templates that I decided I didn't really like, but I wasn't ready to throw away. They might have something in there that I like. Um, these are my, for if I ever do PD stuff, this is where they go. I noticed I put an S there. I wanted them above my Use stuff because they're still good, but I don't want it messing with my classes. My classes, I typically will make a master thing where my templates are. There's those. And then the actual classes. Now, I like having a separation from problem stats and algebra 2 because those classes that I teach, um, if you're a math person, you will know that problem stats doesn't really fit in that much with the other algebra, with the other math classes. Um, it's like a different way of thinking. So that's the reason why I have a separation between them. But... Um, let's say I'm just going to grab one, uh, let's grab a master province stats. I've done more with them. Let's say I grab this guy, all right? I'm going to mess with this one. It's all right. I'll change it back later. I'm going to just show you some really, really cool skills. So, uh, that's good. Now the really cool thing. Miro, you can zoom, like right now I'm at 36%, to almost anything you want. If I want to go to 100% and make it like what's going to be the default setting, I just touch. I'm going to stop using my finger now so you guys can see where I'm going. I just click that zoom button, right there, boom. It automatically goes to 100%. I use that when I'm sizing stuff. I can pinch it with two fingers to make it smaller, spread my two fingers out to make it bigger. That's handy often for doing stuff. Um, Nearpod got me into using GIFs, GIFs if you guys like GIFs, but you know, I'm not really into the GIFs. Um, I use them as kind of like a, hey, they, this is the first day of class, this is 1.1, and a lot of times the kids go in, 
thinking like Jim. What is going on? Because they don't have no clue, and I want them to realize there's something crazy going on because it's a different math class than they're used to. All right, you can put in videos. Down here is a YouTube video. I embedded it into the board. Anything that I embed in to a, a board, the kids can manipulate. So, like, the kids can play this video on their own. Right now, if I'm up here, like, the kids can see everything that I put in there. And as I write stuff, the kids can see what gets written. So, I'm just putting a word in there. That's not the correct word. All you people that are going crazy. When I wrote that on the board, all of my kids, when they on their board, will see that written there as I write it. Let your brain embrace. When I write something, it shows up on every student's screen, whether they're face to face looking at me right on the board or whether they're at home watching me on the computer. Everybody gets an update in real time. OK, um, when I first started doing this stuff, that was handy because then it didn't matter if Janie was sitting in the back of the room behind Bobby, who happens to play um, offensive line for Coach Armstrong. All right? It didn't matter that she couldn't see the board because she could see her screen. Now that we're like struggling with seating and having, you know, synchronous and asynchronous kids and all that stuff, now it doesn't matter if they're in your room or not, they can see your screen. That's handy. Next big thing I want to show you is this button right here where it says screen sharing. I click this. Now, oh, by the way, before I get there, if you're not doing that, if you're still giving your kids a little bit of freedom, up here, I can't show it right now because I don't have any students because it's 623, nobody else is up. Every person that's logged in on the board gets a little icon that pops up at the top, except for you because you're the one in charge of the board. Uh, if they're watching the board, their little logo, their little Google icon, whatever, will show up up there. And if I click on it, I can see exactly what they're looking at. So if I give kids freedom to roam the board and they tell me, that they're struggling or something like that, I literally can just click their name and go exactly to the same Zoom setting they're at and see exactly what's on their screen. When I say exactly on their screen, don't get carried away. I can see exactly where they are in this Miro board. Now, this past spring, I used that because I could see when kids started doing my work for my class, so I'd have that, and I'd click you know, on Miranda. I didn't have a Miranda last semester, so I'm not calling anyone out. I could click on Miranda's name and see that she was at the intro section of the page, right? Ten minutes later, Miranda sends me an email saying she's stuck. I click on her name again, and she's still at the intro thing. I email her back and say, actually, I didn't email, but we'll talk about some of y'all are only going to be at the email stage. Email her back and say, well, Miranda, you're still looking at the intro of the board. Why don't you actually try reading my lesson? It's a little snarky. But Miranda could handle it. She's a tough girl. All right. So there's that. If they're going to be at their own pace, if you're doing office hours, you can see what they're looking at, right, exactly in real, in real time. If you're really bored, you can just watch the names populate on your screen, and you can follow and see how they're traveling, exactly what they're working on, where they've gone. Now, screen sharing, I click that. Right now, everybody's still free. If I click start right now, another, every other kid that was on this board would have a, an exact same spot down here, would have an option that says join. And that means that they are allowed to lock on. And as I move my screen, as I move my screen, not even change stuff, their screen moves. You'll notice this little black box comes up here. That's new. I'm going to talk to you about that in a second. All right. So that's all there. As I move and go through, their screen is moving with me. So if I go over here and I'm like at this video and I click play for the video, they also had the video zoomed in and realized that they should be playing the video. All right, if I click the little camera thing, now you can see my face, yay. And kids also hit the camera, that means you can see their face. All right, this is the visual, visual part. 
Now, some of y'all don't want them to see your face. You just turn your camera off. Um, you can see up to two videos at once. It doesn't like fill up the whole screen because that could be aggravating. Um, you won't get more than two video boxes, but what you will get is an up or down arrow so you can scroll through and talk to people. Right? I don't know about y'all, but it's kind of freeing to not have an entire zoom screen of pictures because it can be overwhelming. All right, I'm going to turn my video off because nobody wants to see me in the morning. If I hit the microphone, now I anyone that has their microphone enabled can have a conversation with me. It's really cool because then they're, remember, they're still locked on my screen. So as I move, if they're at home, they can hear what I'm saying about this stuff right here, right? And they can see it and they can talk to me and say, Coach Hemingway, I don't know what the sample data set is. Right. So, and I can have a conversation. I can even zoom into that one spot and say, okay, we're right here. Let's look, read the problem. And we look at that. That is kind of freeing. All right. Well, I'm going to talk about my favorite tools right now. I'm going to go ahead and lock that just so it doesn't mess up the camera for some reason. My, this toolbar over here, if you hit these guys, if there's, if there's a tool, and by the way, there's extra apps. You can always put in more apps, hit the add more apps. It's kind of intuitive. It's right there at the blue plus sign. It'll bring you to their apps page and you can see one and say, ooh, I'd like to try that. It'll put it in here for you. But let's say you really like mind maps. So you just grab it and put it on your toolbar. And that's where it's going to be. And if you're like, ooh, I don't really like mind maps, you move it back to your backup toolbar. So you can keep them all the way in apps where you have to add more because you can just move them. Or these are your backups. And let's close that out. This is your go-to toolbar, things that you really like. Um, comments are kind of cool because I can allow kids to comment and I can go back and forth and answer their questions. This guy right here, really, really, really powerful. You, you computer freaks, any program, software, hardware, whatever, that has an iframe code built into it, you can embed in a board. You'll see the little favorites list they have down there. You can put Google Images, embed them in there, although there's a built-in tool for that. I'll talk about that in a second. You can embed YouTube videos, which you have seen some on this board. You can embed Google Forms. You can embed Google Sheets and Google Docs. You can embed slide presentations. You can, I mean, almost everything these days has an iframe code. If it has an iframe code, Miro will read it and embed it in your project. Embedded things, students can manipulate. So this whiteboard is mainly for you showing stuff, but I can go to a section where I have kids that I want them to type stuff in a Google Doc that they can all type on. I can embed that Google Doc in that spot. If you want kids to answer on their own, I can embed a Google Form that they fill out where the answers go straight. Um, you know, and I can populate, I can put them in a spreadsheet, I can analyze stuff, grade things really fast, make them take a quiz, Make them, I can embed a section of a Google form um, so I can go over a couple of things, make them answer these five problems, see it populate, I get graphs, I get all the cool stuff from Google forms, and then I go on straight into my next lesson, next part of the next section of my lesson. That's beautiful for chunking and things like that and all those other fancy educational terms. Um, for instance, here's, let's go to my YouTube page. Let's say I want to do this one, all right? show you how easy it is I just hit pause because I don't want to care about that I hit share right and there's an embed thing right there <clears throat> I just copy it go back to my mirror board here paste embed <clears throat> and it puts it at whatever the center of my screen was I can move that thing around wherever I want and let's say Let's say, I don't know how many of you guys liked Prezi's way back in the day. Let's say I want this note, this post-it note, to link to that video. But I don't want this video to be messed up with my lesson. So I'll move this guy way out here somewhere. Click this one. Hit Control-K. Control-K is your link tool. And now I can link that post-it note to anything on the web or, let me scroll over here, anything on the board. So now, if I'm over here, you see this little blue arrow? That blue arrow means there's a link. And 
let's say shrink. That blue arrow is going to be that same size no matter what. So if I zoom in so they can actually see everything, see how it auto sizes? I just click that and it sends us to the video. <gasps> it's amazing. Um, you might want some back buttons every now and then to bring you back. I'll usually, literally, we'll just do a quick Google Google Images. It does a safe search, so you don't have to worry about picking up their Instagram photos because those are not safe. Um, let's say I want a back button. This is literally what I do. I don't like have one saved. I'll just go in here and grab one. Select. Oh, great. Found something that Google actually didn't have there. That does not happen often. All right. Wow, that back button's huge. So I'll just shrink her down. Probably smaller than that, right? Let me zoom in. I'm like, okay, my that's my video size. I want this back button to be kind of tiny. Make it a little bit smaller. That's that's plenty, right? I'm on it. Control K. Go back over here. And I just click on the post-it note. So now this arrow brings me to the video. I watch the video. This back button brings me to the post-it note. But I waste like 30 seconds doing that. Not bad at all. Um, other cool things. Let me go over here so I'm not going to mess up other stuff. Let's say I have a PowerPoint, right? Click File. I'm going to, I don't want to export it. I'm going to save this. Well, we'll put it here. I don't even know what this was. Chapter four videos, blah, 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 blah. All I'm going to do is click down here and there should be JPEG, right? I'm going to save them as images whole presentation now let's hope I remember where that was so I'm in here right all I do is where's my upload button there it is sorry I knew it was a favorite there's my upload button I'm gonna upload from my device notice I can upload from link I can upload all types of stuff um, and now I have to remember where that was that was 4.1 right Classroom Basics. How are you going? Hello. All right, well. How do you get here? Early. I don't know. I just import. I'll just control A. Throw it all in here. You'll see it. I'm out of time. I'm going to keep you all too late, and people are starting to show work. So we'll let that be it.